So we're going to start with a basic toolkit install here. This is exactly what you would see if you were installing the toolkit from scratch and we haven't done any modifications to this host yet. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to install some software. You'll remember that we started with a configuration file earlier and this was written in a language that was easy to make changes to and, and make modifications as we added our hosts and our test specifications. We need to install some software that will convert that into a JSON format. And the reason that we want to do that is because we need to convert this into that format so that it can be consumed by the hosts that are going to be making the measurements and also by the, this host so that it can create the dashboard files. So we use the yum uh, interface on this host to install this file. It may be the case that you have this file already um, if you've already attempted to use other portions of the Persona toolkit. If not, it's good to just try to install it by default. Once we have this installed, we're going to run a, a series of steps to convert our existing configuration file into the JSON format. So in this case, we already have this file installed, so we don't need to update it. Our next step is going to be taking that configuration file that we created already. I'm just going to copy it here, and I'm going to put it on this local host using an editor. I'm just going to call it dashboard.conf. This will indicate that it's written in that configuration file language. Now we need to convert this into the JSON format. We do this using the build JSON tool that came in that package that was already present on our machine. We're going to use the existing configuration file that's located in my home directory and we're going to output this into a, a JSON format. You'll notice that the configuration file builder doesn't spit out any output here and that means that there's, there's no errors present. If there were any syntax errors we would see uh, them show up here in the output and we'd have to go and address this and, and fix them in some way. So now we have our dashboard file and it's in the JSON format. I'll just output it here so that we can see and it looks a little bit different than our configuration file. It's structured in such a way that the software is able to use this to create the tests that it needs to run and how it needs to display the information. So we need to put this in a location where other hosts can consume it. And the easiest way to do this is to stick it in a special folder on our toolkit so that it's available via HTTP. So we're going to copy this JSON file, dashboard.json, into the opt persona ps toolkit web root directory. Now we need to be root user to do this. But when we copy it to this location, we can then utilize a web browser to see this file is now available. So this is the base toolkit that you will see if you just visit that uh, location. If I type in the location of that JSON file, you'll see that it's now available. So other hosts can just use this URL to download this file whenever they need to either make the test or when they need to see what the dashboard configuration is going to look like. Another tool that's available via that package is a validation tool. If we use the validate JSON uh, script and then we enter in the configuration URL of that JSON file that we just published, you'll notice that we don't see any output. This indicates that the file doesn't have any syntax errors. It's a good idea to validate JSON files, particularly if you're not the one who's created them. That way you can make sure that there's no syntax errors that will cause the software to halt. So now we've published our configuration file and it's available for all to use. We need to complete the steps to install the MADDASH software. This is done by using yum again and we're going to just install the MADDASH package. This is something that will pull in a couple of dependencies. You'll notice that this uses Java. It has a server component and a web UI component, and it uses a couple of supporting libraries as well. This will take a little bit of time to download. It's approximately 60 megabytes in size, so depending on your network speed, it may take a, a couple of minutes or perhaps even longer to download. After we download the files, we may have to agree to install the signing keys. The 
packages will then be installed. Once we've installed the software, we need to make a couple of configuration changes. First thing that we want to do is remove the default configuration file for the server. We want to use a, a, a custom made one. So first we'll remove the old file and then we'll recreate it. We don't need to have a lot of information in this file. We only really need three directives. The first directive says to use the database that's stored in varlib maddash. The second indicates that we're using the local host to store the information. If we had the, uh, the, data, the database of measurements stored on a different host, we may indicate that here as well. Lastly, we're going to have this listen on an alternative port, port 8881. If you're using uh, firewalls or ACLs on your site, you'll need to make sure that this port is available for people to consume the information. Once we've written that file, we're going to restart our MADDASH server. We can now open up a web browser and visit the URL where, Mad where MADDASH will be listening. In this case, it'll be the same host as before, but it'll be MADDASH-WebUI. In the beginning, it won't have any useful information, but this just indicates that the software was successful in installing.